me to get in thunder, lightning, or in rain. <gasps> when the hurly burly's done, when the battle's lost and won. <laughs> but shall we ere the set of sun? Where the place? Upon the heath. There to meet with Mac Macbeth. Come, Grimalkin. Had all call on. Fair, fair is foul, and foul, foul is fair. Hover through the fog and fill the air. to seemeth by his plight of the revolt of the new estate. This is a sergeant who, like a good and hardy soldier, fought against my captivity. Hail, brave friend, say to the king the knowledge of the broil is doubted to leave it. Doubtful, sturdy. There's two spent rumors that to cling together and choke there are. The merciless MacDonald, worthy to be a rebel, for two that the multiplying villainies of nature do swarm upon him. From the western isles and currents and gallow glasses to supply. Fortune on his damning quarry, smiling, shows like a rebel for. But all too weak. For brave and back, well he deserves that name. Disdain fortune with his brandished steel, which is smoked with bloody execution. Like valor's minion carved out his passage to his base the slave. Which ne'er shook hands, nor bade farewell to him. Till the unseen <laughs> from the knave to the chops, and fixed his head upon our battle. Oh, valiant cousin, worthy gentlemen. As when the sun gives his reflection, shipwrecking storms and direful thunders break, so from that spring whence comfort seems to come, discomfort swells. Mark, you have got the mark. No sooner justice had with valor arm compelled these skipping currents to trust their heels, but the Norwegian lord, surveying vantage, with firmest arms and new supplies of men began to crush his soul. Dismayed this not our captains, Macbeth and Banquo. Yes. The sparrows, eagles, or the hare, the lion. <laughs> if I see sooth, I must report they were as cannons or charged with double cracks. So doubly they redoubled strokes upon the foe. Except they meant to bathe in reeking wounds. Memorize another Golgoth. I cannot tell. But I am faint. My gashes cry for help. So well thy words become thee as thy wounds. They smack of honor both. Go, get him surgeons. Who comes here? More than they have lost. What a haste looks through his eyes. So should he look that seems to speak to strange. God save the king. Whence comes that worthy thing? From five great king. Where Norwegian banners flout the sky and fan our people cold. Norway himself. With terrible numbers, assisted by the most disloyal traitor that they have caught or began a dismal conflict. To let Bellona's bridegroom, lapped in fruit, confronted him with self comparisons. Point against point, and on his arm against arm, curbing his lavish spirit. And to conclude the victory fell upon us. Great happiness! So now Sweno, the Norway's king, plays composition. <laughs> Nor would be dating and burial with his men, till he disperses at St. Colin's itch. Ten thousand dollars for a general use. No longer shall that fate of Cador deceive our bosom interest. Go, announce his present death. And with his former title, greet Macbeth. I'll see it done. What he hath lost, noble Macbeth hath won.
I'll drain you dry as hay. Sleep shall neither night nor day hang upon his penthouse lid. He shall live, a man forbid. Weary seven nights, nine times nine, shall he dwindle, think, and pine. Though his park cannot be lost, yet it shall be tempest-tossed. Look what I have. Show me, show me. Here I have a pile of thumb. Let his homeward he did come. A drum, a drum. Macbeth not come. Weird sisters, hand in hand, hosted up the sea and land. Thus you go about, about, thrice to thine, and thrice to mine, and thrice again to make up nine. Peace, the charms round up. So foul and fair a day I've not seen, while the forest called the forest. What are these? So withered and so wild in their attire, that look not like the inhabitants of the earth and yet are on Live you? Or are you what that man may question? seem to understand me, by each at once her chubby finger laying upon her skinny lips. You should be women, and yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. Speak if you can. What are you? All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, thin of glass. All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, thin of cardor. All hail Macbeth, that shalt be king hereafter. <laughs> Could so on you start, and seem to fear things that do sound so fair. In the name of truth, are ye fantastical, or that indeed which outwardly ye show? My noble partner, you greet with present grace and great prediction of noble having and of royal hope, but he seems wrapped with all. To me you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not, speak then to me, who neither beg nor fear your favors, nor your hate. Hail. 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 Lesser than Macbeth and greater. Not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So I'll hail Macbeth and back home. Banquo and Macbeth. All of him. Stay, you imperfect speakers. Tell me more. By Sinnel's death, I know I have a thing of glass, a tower of Cardinal. The thane of Cardinal lives a prosperous gentleman, and to be king stands not within the prospect of belief, no more than to be Cardinal. Say from whence you owe this strange intelligence, or why upon this blasted heath you stop our way with such prophetic greeting. Speak, I charge you. Whither are they vanished? Into the air. And what seemed corporal melted his breath into wind. Could it stayed? Were such things here as we do speak about? Or have we eaten on the insane group that takes the reason prisoner? Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. And they have called your two. But did not so. To the selfsame tune and word. Claire! Who's here? The king hath happily received Macbeth the news of my success. And when he reads thy personal venture in the rebel fight, his wonders and his praises do contend, which should be thine or his. Silence to that. In viewing o'er the rest of the self-same day, he finds thee in the stout Norwegian ranks. Nothing but fear of what thyself would say strange images of death. As thick as hail came post to post, and everyone did bear thy praises in his kingdom's great defense. Pour them down before We are sent to give thee from our royal master thanks, only to herald thee into his sight, not pay thee. And for an earnest and greater honor, you bade me from him call thee Thane of Cawdor. In which addition, hail, most worthy really Thane, for it is thine. What can the devil speak true? The Thane of Cawdor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the Thane lives yet? But under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. Whether he was combined with those of Norway, or did lie in rebel with hidden health and vantage, 
Oh, that with both he labored in his country's wrath, I know not. But treasons capital confessed and proved have overthrown him. Robs the thing of Carter. The greatest is behind. Thanks for your pains. Do not hope your children shall be kings. When those that gave the thing of Carter to me promised no less to them. The trust at home might give him kingdom you want to be proud. Besides the thing of Carter. <coughs> But tis strange, and oftentimes to witness to our harm the instruments of darkness tell us truths, <coughs> witness with honest trifles, which betray us the deepest consequence. <coughs> Cousins, a word I pray you. The two truths are told as having prologues to the swelling act of the imperial. I thank you, gentlemen. The supernatural solicitude cannot be ill, cannot be good. If in, why have it given me earnest of success commencing in the truth? I am thinking of Cardinal. If good, <coughs> why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? <coughs> Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thought, whose murder yet is but fantastical, Shakes so my single state of man, that function is smothered in surmise, and nothing is but what is not. Look how our partner's wrapped. If chance will have me king, why, chance may crown me without my stir. New honors come upon him, <coughs> like strange garments, cleave not to their mold, but with the aid of use. Come what come may, time in the hour runs through the roughest day. <coughs> A worthy Macbeth! We stay upon your leisure. Give me your favor. My dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Kind gentlemen, your pains are registered where every day I turn the leaf to read them. Let us tour the king. I forgot with his chance to have more time the interim having waited. Let us speak off three hearts, each two of them. Very gladly. To them now. Come, friends. done on Cawdor, are not those who commission yet returned. My leaf they are not yet come back. But I have spoke with one that saw him die, and did report that very frankly he confessed his treasons, implored your highness pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like the lady. He died as one that had been studied in his death, to throw away the dearest thing he owed as toward a careless trifle. There's no arch to find the mind's construction in the face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. Worthiest cousin, the sin of my ingratitude even now is heavy on me. Thou art so far before that the swiftest wing of recompense is slow to overtake thee. Would thou hadst less deserved, that the proportion both of thanks and payment might have been mine. Only I have left to say, more is thy due than more than all can. The service of the loyalty I am undoing it pays itself. Your Highness's part is to receive our duties, and our duties are to your throne and state, children and servants, which do but what they should by doing everything safe to your love and honor. Welcome hither. I begun to plant thee, and will labor to make thee full of growing. Worthy Banquo, that hast no less deserved, nor must be known, no less to have done so. Let me fold thee, and hold thee in my heart. There, if I grow, the harvest due to your own. My plenteous joys, wanton in their fullness, seek to hide themselves in drops of sorrow. Sons, kinsmen, thanes, and you whose places are the nearest, know we will establish our estate upon our eldest, Malcolm, whom we name the Prince of Cumberland. <laughs> Which honor must not unaccompanied invest him only. But signs of nobleness shall shine like stars on all deserters. From hence to Inverness, and bind us further to you. The rest is labor, which is not used for you. I'll be myself the harbinger, and make joyful the hearing of my wife, the king of Roach. 
so long to take my leave. My worthy Cardo. The Prince of Carnivant. That is a step on which I must fall or else so leap. For in my way it lies. Oh, stars, hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. The eye will get the hand. Yet let that be which the eye fears when tis done to see. True, noble Banquo, he is full so valiant, and in his commendation I am fed. It is a banquet to me. Let's after him, whose care has gone before to bid us welcome. It is a peerless kinsman. They met me in the day of success, and I have learned by the perfectest report they have more in them than mortal knowledge. The star burned and desired to question them further, they made themselves air into which they vanished. The star stood wrapped in the wonder of it, came visits from the king, who all hailed me, Thane of Cardor. By which title before, these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming on of time with, Hail King that shall be. This have I thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou mightst not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness has promised thee. Lay it to thy heart, and farewell. Belongs thou art in Cardo, and shall be what thou art promised. be great, but not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou holily, wouldst not play false, and yet wouldst wrongly win. Thou wouldst have great glance, that which Christ, thus thou must do it, if thou have it. And that which rather thou dost fear to do than wishest, should be undone. Highly hear that. I may pour my spirits into thine ear and chastise with the valor of my tongue all that impedes thee from this golden round, to which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned with all. What is your tidings? The king comes here tonight. Thou art mad to say it is not thy master with him, who art so in a form of preparation. So please you, it is true. Our thane is coming. One of my fellows had the speed of him, who almost dead for breath had scarcely more than would make up his message. You contend me, he brings great news. The raven himself is hoarse, the hoarse the fatal entrance of Duncan under my guidance. Come, spirits, attend on mortal thoughts. Unsex me here, and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood, stop up the passage and access to remorse, that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my woman's breasts, take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers, wherein you cite the substances you wait on nature's mischief. Come, thick night, and fall thee in the dumbest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. Great Brahms, worthy God, or greater than both by the all hail hereafter. Thy letters have transported me beyond the signal of present, and I feel now the future in the instant Dear Sloth, Duncan comes here tonight. Did it win those hands? Tomorrow, for some purposes. We never shall sun that more, I see. Be 
beguile the time, look like the time. Bear welcome in your hand, your eye, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, but be the servant under it. He that's coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall to all our nights and days to come be so many sorrow and sweet, mastered, and they will speak for you. And you look up clear, to alter favor and to fear. Leave all the rest to me. recommends itself unto our gentle senses. This guest of summer is a temple haunting Bartlett does approve by his love and mentioning that the heaven's breath smells wooing me here. No jutty freeze buttress nor coin advantage, but this bird hath made his pendant bed and appropriate cradle. Where they must greet and haunt, I have observed the air is delicate. See, see, our honored hostess. The love that follows us sometime is our trouble, which still we thank is love. Herein I teach you how you shall bid God yield us for your pains, and thank us for your trouble. All our service twice done, and then done double, were poor and single business, to contend against those honours deep and broad wherewith your majesty loads our house. For those of old, and the late dignities heaped up to them, we rest your hermits. Where is the thane of Cador? We coursed him at the heels and had a plan to be his purveyor. But he rides well, and his great love, sharp as his spur, has helped him to his home before us. Fair and noble hostess, we are your guests tonight. Your servants ever have theirs, themselves in what is theirs, and count to take their others at your highness's pleasure. Still to return your own. Give me your hand, conduct me to my host. We love him highly, and will continue in our graces toward him. By your leave, hostess. <coughs> if it were done, it is done. Then it were well, it were done. If the assassination could trangle up the consequence and catch with his surcease success, that but this blow might be a be all and the end. Here, but here upon this bank and shoal of time, we judge like to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here, that we but teach bloody instructions, which being taught, return to plague the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed. Then as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so weak hath been so clear in his great office that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet-tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off. And pity, like a naked newborn babe stride in the blast, or heaven's cherubim, horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air, shall blow this horrid deed in every eye that tears shall drown the wind. I have no spurs to bring the sides of my vaulting ambition, which overleaps itself and falls on the other. How now, what news? He had almost sucked. Why have you left the chamber? Have he asked for me? No, you not, he has. We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which would be worn now when the news lost, not cast aside. So Who was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since? Waits it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely. From this time, such a account by love. 
Art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that which thou esteem the ornament of life? And if a coward in thine own esteem that I dare not wait upon I would, like the poor cat in the attic. Pretty peace! I dare do all that may become a man, who dares do more as none. What beast was it then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you just do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more than a man. No time nor place did then adhere. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now does not make you. I have given suck, but I know how tender it is to love the babe that lives me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brains out. And I so sworn as you had done to this. If we should fail. We fail. your courage to the stinging place and will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, where to the rather his day's hard journey shall soundly invite him, his two chamberlains will I with wine and mustard so convince that in memory the water of the rain shall be a fume and the receipt of reason a limbic only. When in swinish sleep their drenched nature's lies as in death. What, what not can we put upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon this spongy officer should have bear the guilt of our great quell? And the fourth man shall give them away. For thy undaunted metal should compose nothing for the flames. They would not be received when they have marked with blood their sleepy tomb in his own chamber, and use their very daggers, for they have done it. Who dares receive it others? We shall make our griefs and clamors roar upon his death. Bend up each corporal agent of his terrible feet. Away. And mark the time of fair show. False face must have it, false heart.
thou not fate of vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation, proceeding from the heat of oppressive brain? I see thee yet. Informed as palpable as this, which now I draw. Thou marshalest me the way that I was going. And such an instrument was I to use. Mine eyes had made the fools of the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still. And on thy blade and dungeon, gouts of blood which was not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs us to mine eyes. Now all the one half world, nature seems dead. Wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale hanging offerings. In withered murder, alarmed by his sentinel wolf. Thus with his stealthy pace, with Tarquin's ravishing strides, towards his design moves like a ghost. I'm sure of firm set earth. Hear not my steps which will be walk. Thy very stones prayed of my whereabout. Take the present horror from the time which now sits with it. For as I threat he lives, words to the heat of deeds too cold breath gives. I go when tis done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is an L. Summons thee to heaven or to hell. Seen me with these hangmen's hands. 
Listening their fear, I could not say amen when they did say, God bless us. Not so deeply. Wherefore could I not pronounce amen? I was in most needs of a blessing, and amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought of after these ways. So it will make us mad. Methinks I heard a voice cry. Sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep. The innocent sleep. The sleep that knits up the rabbit sleep of care. Death of each day's life. Soul labor's bath. Balm of hurt minds. Great nature's second course. Chief nourisher of life's feast. What do you mean? He still it cried. Sleep no more. To all the house, Glams hath murdered sleep, and therefore Cardinal shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Oh, what if it does cry? Why, what do you think you do unbend your noble strength to think so bring sickly of things? Coquets of water, wash this filthy witness from your head. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go carry them and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think of what I've done. Look on it again, I dare not. Spar my purpose! Give me the daggers. Sleeping in the dead of his pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. If he do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. Thank you. 
very source of it is stopped. Thy royal father is murdered. Oh. By whom? Those of his chambers, it seemed, had done it. Their hands and faces were all badged with blood. So were their daggers, which unwiped we found upon their pillows. They stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Oh, yet I do repent me in my fury that I have killed them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate and furious, loyal and neutral in a moment? No man. The expedition of my violent love outran the pause of reason. Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood, and his gash stabs were like a breach in nature for ruin's wasteful entrance. There the murderers, steeped in the colors of their own trades, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could refrain that had a heart to love, and in that heart courage to make loves known? Help me, and so look to the lady. Why do we hold our tongues that most may claim this argument for ours? What should be spoken here, where our fate hid in an auger hole may rush and seize us? But to why our tears are not yet brewed, nor our strong sorrow upon the point of motion. When we have our major frailties hit, that suffer an exposure, let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work to know it further. Fears and scruples shake us. In the great hand of God I stand, and thence against the undivulged pretense I fight treasonous malice. And so do I. So all. So all. Let's briefly put on man and madness and meet in the hall together. Welcome to Welcome. 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 Sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. Out to England. To Ireland, I. Our separated fortune shall keep us both safer. Where we are, there's daggers and men's smiles. The nearer blood, the nearer bloody. This murderous shaft the shot hath not yet lighted. And our safest way is to avoid the aim. Therefore, a horse, and be not dainty of our leave taking, but shift away. Warned in that death that steals itself when there's no mercy left. Three score and ten. I can remember well, within the volume of which time I have seen hours dreadful and things strange. But this sore night hath trifled former knowings. Ah, good father, thou seest the heavens. is troubled with men's act, threatens his brother's stage. By the clock tis day, and yet dark night strangles the traveling light. Is it night's predominance or the day's shade? Darkness of the face of earth and tomb, and living light should kiss it. Tis unnatural, ye even like the deed that's done. On Tuesday last, a falcon, towering in her place of pride, was by a massing owl hacked at and killed in Duncan's horses. I think most strange and certain, beauteous and swift, the minions of the race, turned wild in nature, broke their stalks, flung out, contending against obedience as they would make war with mankind. Tis said they ate each other. They did so. The amazement of mine eyes. Here comes the good Macduff. How goes the world, sir? Now? Why? See you not. Is it known that this modern bloody deed? Those that Macbeth hath slain. The last of them. What good did they portray? They were suborned. Malcolm and Darwin, the king's two sons, are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them the suspicion of the deed. Against nature still. Thriftless ambition that will raven up thine own life's means. It is like the sovereignty will fall upon the bed. He is already named. 
and got to scope, did we invest it? Where is Dr. Charlie? Harry Takumi, the sacred storehouse of his predecessors, the garden of their bones. Where did you just go? No, cousin. I'll to fight. Well, I will be. Well, may you see things well done there. Adieu. Lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Farewell, Father. <coughs> God's medicine go with you, and with those that would make good of bad, and friends of foes. <coughs> Genius is rebuked, 
as it is said Mark Antony's was by Caesar. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me, and bade them speak to him. Then prophet-like, they hailed him father to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown, and put a barren scepter in my gripe, thence to be wrenched with an unmenial hand, no son of mine succeeding. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I fired my mind. For them the gracious Duncan have I murdered. Put rancors in the vessel of my peace only for them. And mine eternal jewel given to the common enemy of man to make them kings, the seeds of Banquo kings. Rather than so, come fate into the list and champion the people to their Who's there? Now go to the door and stay there till we call. Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please, your highness. Well then, now have you considered of my speeches? Know that it was he in the times past which held you so under fortune, which you thought had been our innocent self. This I might clear to you in our last conference, past in probation how you were born in hand, how crossed, the instruments, who wrought with them, all things else that might to half a soul and a notion craze say, thus did Banquo. You made it known to I us. I did so, and went further, which is now our point of second meeting. Are you so gospel to pray for this good man and his issue, whose heavy hand had bowed you to the grave and beggared yours forever? Queer are then, my lady. Ah, in the catalogue you go for me. As hounds, greyhounds, mongrels, spaniels, curs, shawls, water rugs, and demi wolves are clept, all by the name of dogs. The valued file distinguishes the swift, the slow, the subtle, the housekeeper. Every one according to the gift which bounteous nature hath in him closed. And so of men. Now, if you have a station in the file, not in the worst rancor of man, say it. And I'll put that business in your bosoms whose execution takes your enemy off. I have won my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed, that I am reckless in what I do to spite the world. And I another, so weary with disaster, tugged. Both of you know that Banquo was your enemy. True. So is he mine. And in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrusts against my nearest of life. Though I could, with barefaced power, sweep him from my sight and bid my will avouch it. Yet I must not. For certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I may not drop, but wail his fall whom I myself struck down. And thence it is that I to your assistance do make love, masking the business from a common eye for sundry waiting reasons. We shall perform what you command us. No, I'll advise you when to plant your souls, for it must be done tonight. Fleance's his son, who keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to me than his father's, who must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart. I'll come to you alone. We are resolved, my lord. I'll call upon you straight. Abide with him. It is concluded. Banquo, thy soul's flight, if it find heaven, must find it out tonight.
too sacred to be that which we destroy, and by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. Ah, oh, now, my lord, why do you keep alone? If sorry as fancies your companions making, using those thoughts which should indeed have died, but then they think on. It's done, it's done. We have scorched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself, whilst our poor malice remains in danger of her falling to it. But let the frame of things disjoint, both the world's side. Ere we will eat our meals in fear and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams that shake us like me. Better be with the dead, whom we to gain our peace have sent to peace, than on the torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Treason has done his worst. Nor steel, nor poison, malice domestic, foreign levy, nothing can touch him further. Come on. Gentle, my lords, leave all your worried looks. Be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. So shall I love? And so I pray be you. Let your remembrance apply to Benko, presenting eminence both with eye and tongue. Unsafe the while that we must lay our honors in this place of extremes and make our faces visits to their hearts disguised as they are. People must leave this. Thou knowest that Banco and his fiance lives. But in the Beatrice copy, not a term of his comfort yet. They are assailable. Then be thou Jokan. Ere the bat hath flown his cloistered flight, ere black Hecate summons the sharp worm beetle with his drowsy heart, hath run night's yarn appeal, there shall be done a deed of dreadful night. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge to his chuck. To thou applaud the deed. Come, see me, knight. Scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day. With thy bloody and invisible hand, cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which makes me pale. Thy thickens, and the crow makes way to the rookie wood. Good things of day begin to droop and drowse, whilst night's black agents to their praise do browse. Thou marvelous of my words, but be still. Things bad begun make strong themselves by evil. So pretty, go with me.
You know your own degrees. Sit down. At first and last, the hearty welcome. Thanks to your majesty. Our self will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her state, but in best time, we will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends. From my heart speaks, they are welcome. See, they encounter thee with their heart's thanks. Both sides are even. Here I'll sit in the midst. Be large in mirth, anon we'll drink a measure of the table round. There's blood on my face. Sit backwards, John. It's better thee without than thee within. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut. That I did for him. Thou art the best of the comfort. Yet he's good that did the life for Fleance. If thou didst, thou art the non parade. Most royal sir, Fleance escaped. Then comes my fit again. I had else been perfect, whole as a marble, as founded as a rock, as broad and general as a casing air. But now I am cabined, cribbed, confined, and bound to saucy doubts and fears. The bank will sink. Aye, my good lord. Safe in a ditch he bides, with twenty trenched gashes on his head, the least of death to nature. Thanks for that. There the grown serpent lies. The worm that's fled hath taught nature that in time will venom breed. No teeth for the present. Get thee gone. Tomorrow we'll get ourselves in. My royal lord, you do not give the cheer. The feast is sold that is not often vouched while it is making. Sweet remembrance, sir. Now good digestion, wait on appetite, and have one more. Here, here. Mm -hmm. May it please your highness sit. Here have we now our countries on the roof. Were the graced person of our banquet present, who may I rather challenge front kindness than pity for this chance? His absence only lays blame upon his promise. Please it your highness to grace us with your royal company. The table's full. Here's a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord. What is it that moves your highness? Which one of you moves, Douglas? What, my, my lord? lord? Thou canst not say I did it. Never shake thy gory locks at me. Gentlemen, rise. His highness is not well. Sit, worthy friends. My lord is often thus and happy from his youth. Pray, you keep seat. <laughs> and once you go to we shall offend and extend his passion. Feed him, regard him not. <coughs> a mad eye and a bold one that dare look on that which might have the devil of proper stuff. This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air drawn devil which you said led you to dung. All these flaws and starts and posters to true fear. It will become a woman's story to wind fire authorized by her grand death. Shame itself. Why make you such faces? When all's done, you look on the stool. You see there? Look, lo, how say you? What care I? If thou canst not, speak to her. If charnel houses and our graves must send those that we bury back, our monuments shall be the laws of kites. What a great old man, father. If I stand here, I saw him fight for shame. Blood hath been shed ere now in the open time. Aye, and since two murders have been performed, too terrible for the evil. The times has been that when the brains were out, the man would die, and there an end. But now they rise again with twenty mortal murders on their crowns and push us from our stools. This is more strange than such a murder as. My holy lord, you do not give the cheer. Your noble friends do lack you. I do forget. Do not muse at me, most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity, which is nothing to those that know me. Come. Love and health to all. Then I'll sit down. Give me some wine. <coughs> Joyful. I drink to the general joy of the whole table, and our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss. Would he were here. To all and him we thirst, and all to all. Our dear our Jesus Jesus Jesus. Jesus. Of 
haunt you and quit my sight. Let the earth hide thee. Thy bones are marrowless. Thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with. Think of this, good Piers, but this has been no custom. There's no other place for us to pleasure at the time. <laughs> Approach thou like the rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros of the Hyrcan tiger. Take any shape but that, and my firm nerve shall never tremble. Oh, be alive again, and dare me to the desert with thy sword. If trembling I inhabit then, protest me the baby of a girl. Hence, honorable Chandu, unreal mockery, hence! I so, being gone, I am a man again. Pray you, sit still. <laughs> <laughs> we have displaced the mirth, broke the good medium with most admired disorder. Can such things be? And overcome us like a summer's cloud without our special wonder. You make me strange, even to the disposition of thy own. To think you can behold such sights and keep the natural beauty of your cheeks while mine is blanched with fear. What sights, my lord? I pray you speak not. He grows worse, question and rages him. At once, good night. Stand not upon the orb you're going, but go at once. Good night, and better help the tent of Majesty. And good night to all. They will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move, trees to speak. Augurs and understood relations have by magpies, charles, and rooks brought forth the secret as men. It is the night. Almost with hours of morning, which is which. How sayest thou that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? Did you send to him, sir? I hear it, by the way. But I will send. There's not a one of them in his house I keep a servant. I will tomorrow. The times I will to the great sisters. Or shall they speak? For now I am bent to know by the worst means the worst. For mine own good causes shall give way. I am in blood, stepped in so far. Shall I wait no more, returning where his tedious is gone? Strange things I have in head, that will to hand, which must be acted ere they may be scanned. Strange and self-abuse is the initiative fear which wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed.
sir, can you tell where he bestows himself? The son of Duncan, for whom this tyrant holds the due of birth, lives in the English court, and is received of the most pious Edward with such grace that in the loveliness of fortune nothing takes from his high respect. Thither Duff is gone to pray the holy king upon his aid, to wake Northumberland in warlike sword, that by the aid of these, with him above to ratify the work, we may again give to our tables meat, sleep to our nights, free from our feasts and banquets bloody knives, do faithful homage and receive free honor, all which we pine for now. Some holy angel fly to the 